Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Do you have a fear of the dark or things that hide in the shadows? What happens when the thing you fear is a shadow or a shadow person? Tonight's stories center on those very shadow people. We'll walk hand in hand as I guide you through these anxiety-inducing stories and safely out the other side. So, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, 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 together. I am a 14-year-old female. This happened when I was seven. I just talked to my mother about this incident and decided to share it. Back when I was seven, I lived with my grandmother, father, mother, and two dogs in a place that was quite far from any town. One day, my dad was out driving my grandma to a doctor's appointment at a hospital, so I was alone in the house with mom. After several rounds of hide and seek and watching a movie, it began to get dark outside and dad still wasn't home. I've always been afraid of potential home invasions being out so far and so isolated. So I was paranoid all day because dad wasn't with us as he always made me feel safe. Mom and I decided to play Monopoly. Now, when I was seven, I thought I was very sly. So I kept stealing money out of mom's Monopoly money stash. Now that I look back, she was probably just pretending not to see. As I was taking a $50 bill out of her Monopoly cash, the power went out. Mom went to check it out, but before she did, she handed me an old Nokia phone and told me to play my favorite games on it until she got back. As she headed out, she locked the room door. I played the game for what felt like hours, but was probably only five minutes, when I heard footsteps in the kitchen next to my room. I yelled out, Mom? Glad that she was back because I was really starting to get scared. No answer. The footsteps didn't stop, so I called out again. Mom, can you please come? I'm scared. After that, the footsteps stopped completely. I got a sudden rush of adrenaline, so I held tight onto that phone and I dashed out of the room into the kitchen, which was empty. I was puzzled, but it didn't take me long before I ran for the corridor. The door I came through was the closest to the outside, so I quickly opened that door, ready to run out. But the rush of adrenaline was already gone, and I got scared of the outside, too. It was very dark, and I could barely see, and I did have that fear of the dark. At this point, I had two choices. One, go back to the room from which I came, or two, scream for my mother. I chose number two and started screaming for my mother over and over again. I guess I wasn't loud enough because there wasn't a reply. I remember starting to panic. Different scenarios began playing in my little head. Scenarios like a murderer killed my mom and was coming for me next. Or mom left and she's gone forever, never to return. Stupid, I know, but I was only seven cut me some slack. I remember looking down at my feet and starting to cry. More footsteps were heard, but this time behind me. I looked behind me and saw the silhouette of a tall person. I'm assuming a male due to the body type, and it was at the end of the hallway, standing in front of the door. I can't say what it looked like because it was just all black. I stared at it for about 15 seconds in pure horror. This got my adrenaline pumping again and I ran out the door towards the outside, only to be greeted by my mother with a worried look on her face. I told her what happened through uncontrollable sobs. My dad was in the driveway parking the car. Turns out my grandma had to be left at the hospital for treatment and that's why he was late. He searched the house but no one was found. So mom told me it was just my imagination, but I know what I heard and saw. Fast forward seven more years. I now live in another house 
and I randomly remembered this incident from my childhood, and I talked to mom about it. She seemed quite hesitant to tell me this, but in the end, I convinced her to tell me. What she said gave me chills. Apparently, when I was four years old, I started staring at one particular corner of the kitchen in that old house, and I'd laugh like crazy. My mom would ask me, what's so funny? And every time I would just point to the corner, but never say what it was that I was laughing at. After a few months, the random laughter still hadn't stopped. What made mom lose it was the fact that I had started speaking random German words, even though I'd never heard the language before. We have no relatives or friends that are German or can speak German. Mom can understand and speak a tiny bit of German, but she had never used the language to me or around me. She bribed me with candy and asked me how I learned to say the following words in German. It, help, chocolate, shower, and war. My response completely shocked her. I pointed to that same corner in the kitchen and said, he taught me how. Mom kept her cool though and just said, uh, who's that, dear? And I said, the man who makes me laugh. Mom asked what he looked like, but I said, he only looks like a shadow and I know he's from Germany. When she asked where the man lived, I pointed up to the second floor of the house. This all made sense because I've always hated that second floor and I'd never go up there alone because I always felt like I was being watched. My parents took it upon themselves to Google search the history of the house and sure enough, it was built by a German family. I didn't remember any of this, but my mom kept reassuring me that it did happen. My father said he remembered it happening too, but they decided not to tell me until now. I talked to that German man in the corner up until age five. I'm pretty sure you can put two and two together, but if not, the man that I saw when I was seven was the same man that I had talked to when I was four. Every time I go back to visit my grandma, I always feel uneasy. When my husband and I had our first child, we decided to upgrade to a larger home. The one bedroom house we were living in was too small now that our family had grown to include a baby, two dogs, and a cat. So we bought a nice fixer upper with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a large yard for the dogs. It didn't take long for the house to announce itself as haunted. My husband worked nights so my daughter and I were often alone at night. It fell to me to get the boxes unpacked and the house set up. Not long after moving in, I was putting away clothes with my daughter next to me in her rocker. As I folded shirts, I heard a loud bang at the back of the house. It sounded like something had been thrown up against a wall, hard. Yet, when I investigated, I found nothing that could have made that noise. The dogs and cat hadn't knocked anything over, and each room I searched, everything was in place. Nothing had fallen, nothing thrown. The sound definitely came from inside, but I looked outside as well anyway. No one was in the backyard, and nothing was out of place. That was the first time, but certainly not the last, that I would hear unexplained noises. Loud banging in the walls became a regular thing, but soon enough, we noticed even more things as well. Okay, I noticed other things. My husband didn't believe me at first, since most of these things took place when he was gone. I started to hear voices talking when I was alone in the house, and it wasn't the dogs, the cat, or my infant daughter, that's for sure. I like taking baths, so once in a while, as my daughter napped, I would treat myself to a nice warm bath, leaving the door ajar so I could see and hear my daughter. As I bathed, I would hear voices having a conversation. It was loud enough for me to hear, but not loud enough for me to make out what they were saying, or even to tell if they were male or female voices. 
One day our furnace went out and my husband went down to the cellar to fix it. He hated going down there because it was dirty and creepy. At one point, my husband yelled up the stairs, telling me to stop jumping around in the living room. It was annoying and distracting him. I had no clue what he was talking about. No one was in the living room. No one was jumping up and down. And I had been in the laundry room right by the cellar door the whole time and heard nothing. I told him this, yet he kept insisting that someone was jumping up and down, making noise. Secretly, I was happy that he finally experienced something and I hadn't. Things escalated from there. I began to see shadow people around the house and I'd hear voices coming over the baby monitor. It made me nervous to think that it may try to do something to my child. When I found out I was pregnant with my son, I decided to put whatever was in the house on notice. I announced to them, to the heir really, that I was no longer going to pay them any mind and they needed to leave my daughter, unborn son, and me alone. I wanted peace in my home. I had no idea this would mean that whatever was in our house would then turn its attention to my husband. It started out with little things, like he would get locked out of the house, even when he would just run out to the car to get something out of the trunk and leave the back door unlocked and wide open. In the short amount of time it took him to complete the task, the door would be shut and locked. This happened even when I wasn't home, so it wasn't me doing it. One night, he and a friend went out to dinner when I was away. When they arrived back home, my husband was about to put the key in the lock when they both heard the sound of heavy footsteps running down the hall inside the house. They quickly unlocked the door and went inside, ready to fight whoever had broken in, only to find the house completely empty and nothing disturbed or missing. As part of fixing up the house, we pulled up the carpets to expose the hardwood floors. While redoing the finish, we put down plastic runners so we could walk through the hallways without harming the floors. We would be in our room at night talking and you could clearly hear someone walking on that plastic. Yet when we'd go to investigate, no one was there. One time when my husband had the night off from work, we heard someone walking in the attic, loud stomping, going from one end of the attic to the other and back again. My husband said it could be a branch or a bird or a rat. Well, birds and rats are not that loud. Plus, we didn't have a tree anywhere near the attic, so I made him go up and look. When he went up and opened the attic door, he saw a shadow person at the far end of the attic. It stood there facing him for a few seconds, then just disappeared. Finally, he was beginning to believe me. After my son was born, things got worse, not better. My warning to leave us alone only served to provoke this thing and have it include my husband in its games. One night, I was feeding my son in the bedroom and asked my husband to go get me a glass of water. He went into the kitchen to get me the water and I heard him call, Honey, are you still in the bedroom? I laughed and said, well, of course, where else would I be? He came running in and slammed the door. I was shocked and asked him what was the deal. He was pale and obviously shaken. He said, I just saw you in the rocking chair in the living room. You were giving me the most evil look. It was scaring me. I walked out into the living room and looked at my rocking chair. I felt very uneasy. I did not like that this thing was taking on my image. We moved about seven months later, but it followed us to the new house and to my parents' home. It stopped messing with my husband and went back to focusing on me. The voices kept up and we would find doors open when we knew we had them closed. Then about a year later, I got very sick sick enough that I was in terrible pain and came close to passing out. 
One night, my kids and husband were asleep, but I couldn't sleep, so I was sitting in the living room. I said out loud, whoever is here, I just need comfort right now. Should I go to the hospital? I didn't expect an answer, but all of a sudden, all of the doorknobs in the house started to shake for about a minute. I immediately got up and got my husband, called my parents and went to the hospital. I found out that I had ulcers that had torn open and were slowly killing me. I had to have surgery. Whatever was in the house followed me to the hospital. I would see a shadow person in my room when I was alone. And I thought, whoever you are, you saved my life, so I'm not going to tell you to leave. It went quiet for a long while after that. But now, four years later, it started up all over again. This all started when I was about 12. I'm 19 now. My sister Zoe, my father, my stepmother at the time, and her two daughters, Jade and Maddie, went camping. We'd only been there for a day and everything was fine. Then my sisters and I decided we were going to go down to the stream by ourselves. Now the place we were going to was surrounded by woods and you had to get there by going down a little path. We spent a long while with our shoes off, splashing in the water, when Jade said she could see someone standing amongst the trees. We all looked and saw a figure. It was all black, but you could tell it was in the shape of a man, but you couldn't see a face. We stared at it for a few seconds and then he disappeared. Being kids, we forgot about it and kept playing in the water. But I felt a little uneasy. A little while later, we all looked to see if it was back. And it was. Everything was silent. I could hardly hear the rapids in the little stream we were standing in. We stopped looking. After about 20 minutes, we decided to head back to camp. My sisters lingered behind me. I was about 20 meters ahead of them, and we couldn't see one another. I heard a twig snap behind me and turned to look assuming that they had caught up to me. Nope. I turned to see the tall, dark figure literally a foot behind me. So I started running. The whole time, I could feel him close behind. I ran as fast as I could until I was out in the open campground. Then he was gone. My sisters caught up not long after, and I told them what happened. I asked, but none of them had seen him behind me and they weren't that far behind me. Throughout our camping trip, we didn't see him around as much, but occasionally he would show up just standing there. Fast forward a couple of years, and we go back there with my father's new girlfriend and her daughter, Stella. I can't recall the trip much, but I do know for a fact Stella saw him too. Then, three years ago, I started seeing him at my house, and just anywhere and everywhere, really. One day, I was out in the backyard, and I started to lean down to pat my cat, when out of the corner of my eye, I could see him standing right behind me. I ignored him, telling myself that he's never done me any real harm, not really. I concentrated on looking at my cat to block him out, as I did I felt a hand grab my hair and tug. I spun around, nothing was there. I went inside a bit spooked. I now live with my boyfriend, and I can't say 100% if I've seen it again. I sometimes see shadows moving behind me in the reflection on the TV, but when I look behind me, nothing's there. So I have just been chalking it up to a trick of the light. I did hear something, though, recently. My boyfriend's alarm went off for work, waking me up, too. He switched it off, but lay in bed for a little bit longer. I was awake, facing my boyfriend's back. Suddenly, I kid you not, I heard someone whisper my name right in my ear. 
It was so clear and so close, I could even feel cold breath on me. I sat up and said to my boyfriend, did you just say my name? He looked at me confused. He said, uh, no, I didn't. And I believe him because it was a female voice. This doesn't really relate to the other experiences, but I thought I'd throw it in anyway. My name is Kyle, and I live in a haunted house in Edmonton, Alberta. Well, at least my mom and brother thought so, but I was skeptical at first that the house was haunted, until something happened to me personally. I'm 19 now, but this story took place when I was 17. First off, I'll list the events that happened to my mother and brother, predating the event that happened to me. My mom and brother have both had cases of sleep paralysis in the house, which had never happened before we moved in. They both told me their experiences went like this. They'd feel someone was slowly pushing down or sitting on their chest as they slept. They would wake up unable to speak or move, which is quite scary if you think about it, being helpless like that. Another thing that happened to both mom and my brother, when they would be sleeping, somebody or something would yank the covers off their bed. My brother had this happen multiple times, whereas my mother only had it happen once. My brother also experienced the same thing that I did, but two weeks before, and he didn't tell me until it happened to me. Now that you know the predating events, I'll tell you my story. It was a weekend, and my mom had left to take my brother to soccer practice while I stayed home in my room playing video games with a friend. After we finished playing, I turned off Discord, said goodbye to my friend, and opened up YouTube. While I was lying on my bed, I heard the dishes in the sink in the kitchen start rattling. Then I began to hear the cabinets opening and closing. Me, being stupid, thought it was just my mom back from soccer practice even though they had just left 30 minutes earlier, and soccer always took at least two hours. I peeked my head out the door and looked down the hall to see if it was them. To my shock, it wasn't them. Instead, I saw a black, misty shadow person standing at the end of the hall that leads to the kitchen. In complete awe of what I was seeing, I just stared at the thing unable to process what was in front of me. After what seemed like a minute or two, I dipped back into my room, slammed the door shut, and sat against it. I remembered that my phone was on the bed, so I slid over to it and texted my mom, asking her what I should do. She told me to get out of that house and go stay with a friend until she could get back home with my brother. So I did. I looked outside the door up and down the hallway to make sure if the coast was clear. Luckily, it was. Gathering my courage, I grabbed my skateboard and booked it down the hall and out the door, grabbing my shoes on the way. I stopped in the driveway long enough to put them on. As soon as I had them on, I plopped the board down on the ground and took off, almost wiping out in my hurry, and I rode over to my friend's house. Once I got there, he let me in and I sat down and told him what I saw. To my surprise, he believed me. And he told me that one time, while he was staying the night at my house, he saw what I saw in the kitchen. He had been sleeping on the couch in the living room and he woke up in the middle of the night and saw, standing in the kitchen, staring down the hallway towards the bedrooms, that dark figure. Apparently, he thought he was dreaming since he was still half asleep and groggy, so he never said anything about it. Once my mom got home, we felt okay since there is safety in numbers, so we decided to enter the house. As soon as we were inside, you could tell that someone or something had been there. All the dishes that had been in the sink were now stacked on top of the counter, and all the cabinet doors were wide open and the dishes that had been inside the cabinet were also stacked on the counter. 
we decided we weren't going to spend the night there and went to our cousin's house, who lived 15 minutes away in Sherwood Park. When we got home the next day, everything was back to normal, except the lights were now on throughout the house. Ever since this happened, I am a firm believer in ghosts and the supernatural. Well, we've arrived safely on the other side. Those were quite disturbing stories, weren't they? I certainly hope they don't give you any nightmares. Tell me what you thought about them in the comments below. And before you go, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you can always find your way back to my dark little corner of the universe. My life would be so uninteresting without our weekly visits. I'd miss you. I hope you'd miss me too. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>